Welcome back to The Stars Made Me Do It. We have special guest Martha here today. Welcome, Martha. Welcome, Martha. Hi. So Martha and I both live in the northern Paris area, and we got connected through our Pisces guest, Brooke, who followed both of us and was like, you guys should be friends. And now we are. <laughs> It's so lucky that she put us together because it's rare to find people who like astrology and rare to find English speaking friends in France. I know, I know. It's like the perfect combination. And when we actually met in person, you said something like about, oh, well, this person with their Virgo rising, blah, blah, blah. I love how I can just say that to you and you get it. <laughs> it's so lucky. I'm like, but, but we won the lottery in friendship in that way. I know, I know. So, yeah. So, Martha's here to talk to us about everything connected with yoga and astrology because the June 21st, which I believe will be the day after this episode comes out is the international day of yoga. So we thought we'd, we'd get some yoga talk. And I thought it was fascinating when I started following you and that you connect astrology to yoga. So how did you get into that? Yes. Yeah, so I was already a yoga teacher for uh a few years now and I've always been into astrology and then I started like really diving into it during the pandemic because I had so much time and it just makes sense to combine them because every sign rules body parts and you can release traumas in your body parts by moving so it makes sense to be working with those energies together that's so interesting oh, yes I, I like I I didn't know where where this was going at all I'm really showing up here with like no knowledge of how any of this is gonna work so like that's really cool <laughs> I like it I'm just trying to get Tara into yoga now so uh I was told I should do yoga and meditate so I got a yoga mat with Sierra the other day and I haven't opened it yet but it's it's here and I have it so so this is but this is such a cool thing too where it's yeah. like because like you were saying, Martha, before we started recording this, uh, yoga isn't easy. People think yoga is supposed to be no, easy. No, I, I don't think it's easy. Yeah. yeah. People come to my classes who are brand new to yoga all the time. And they end up being like, that was so hard. And I'm like, well, that was the easiest class, but it's not supposed to be easy. It's yeah. a place you show up every day for yourself. Yeah. It's supposed to be easy. Yeah, that's been like my thing this year. I have literally done yoga every single day this year. And I was never a yoga person. I was like always of the mentality, if I'm going to do exercise for 30 minutes, I better burn as many calories as I possibly can. And it's like, that's not what this is about, though. This is much more like, it's like physical health, but so much mental health going on there. And then when I saw, you know, everything like on your feed about connecting it to astrology, it just made sense because we've talked about in some of our episodes how you can connect, you know, like uh, Sagittarius rules the hips and thighs. And that's normally where my problem areas will be or where I collect extra everything. And then, uh, you know, like Gemini, it's Gemini season. That's like the duality of everything. Arms, lungs, hand, you know, clavicle. So it makes sense. Yeah. And it's so funny that you said that for you, it's more than just working out because for a Sagittarius sun, it's really important to be meditating because a Sagittarius, their whole goal in life is like finding truth in things, like finding the truth in your belief system. And when you're sitting in meditation, you get those downloads of the truth and you understand yourself more. So like, that's really what your practice should be. So it's funny that. <laughs> I love and it. Very Capricorn moon of you to do it every single day, like slow but steady wins the race. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so not good at doing anything in moderation. So I'm trying to tap into that cat moon energy. I'm more like, I'm gonna exercise every day and sweat and lose all the weight. And then I'm like, I'm gonna eat all the bags of chips today, you know? <laughs> it's balance, it's balance. You can eat the chips and the workout, right? Is that how that works? I know, I know. So, um, so yeah, well, before we get started, why don't you tell us what your top three are so people listening can know that. Gemini rising, Leo sun, and Scorpio moon. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, got some negative connotation with the Scorpio moon, but I feel like it grounds me because I'm very, like, I could be very superficial if it was just the Gemini and the Leo, I think, but. Yeah, yeah, Scorpio will keep you deep. Well, those are three, like, I mean, super intense. strong, intense signs, but. Yeah, and I think that's like really, it's a nice top three. I feel all the intensity, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a bunch of planets going on in your third house because 
you definitely exude Gemini energy and you feel that too. I remember you saying. Yeah, I feel 100% more Gemini than Leo, even though I have three planets in Leo, but they're all in the third house. So yeah, my chart ruler, Mercury, is in Leo in the third house. So that's so strong, which is why, of course, I'm on a podcast and it's not the first podcast I've been on. And and I need it. I need to do that to express. Yeah, Yeah. expressing creatively, but with chatter. (laughs) Love it. My north node is in the fifth house, which is a Leo house. So it's just like so, so much Leo and Gemini going on. Love it. Love it. We love Leos and Gemini. Yes, we do. Yeah. And we're still in Gemini season. Actually, when this episode comes out, it'll be the last day of Gemini season. And we're all about oh, the cool. stuff the Gemini hate. So yeah. I'm kind of a Gemini guest then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So what, where shall we start for how we connect like yoga and astrology? Well, I guess we can go into like how I set up my practices for my students. Normally I'll do like classes bi-weekly or whatever throughout the, throughout each season. So throughout Aries season, I will do a certain class and then throw it off them. Do you want me to go through like how I would do a class for each sign? Well, why don't we, we can talk about what the season coming up for people listening. So maybe how would you go through cancer season? Because we're going into cancer season. And then um, I don't know if that maybe that makes sense, because that could benefit the most amount of people listening. For sure. So cancer rules like the stomach, the womb area, the ovaries, the lymphatic system as well. So when I go through a cancer class, which is more of a very deep feeling sign, I like to go through some yin yoga classes, which is where you hold postures for like, three, to five minutes to seven minutes, like longer holds and postures. You're like resting on the floor normally. It's very restorative. So you can get in touch with your emotions, in touch with your intuition. And then when I'm doing a yin yoga class, I like to do the postures that help the lymphatic system drain, which is all like forward folds and putting your head below everything where your body is like hanging so that you can get drainage of the lymphatic system. That's really cool. Yeah. And then I like to do like a little guided meditation through cancer season as well to get into, to tap into the emotions that people are hiding. Cause a, a cancer's real goal in life is to express the emotions that they're feeling, but they kind of hide them for a while. So getting into a yin yoga class, like the first yin yoga class I ever did, I, I bawled my eyes out <laughs> uh, because you hold so much trauma in these places and forward folds and anything that's like going into your womb area or your stomach area and you're releasing when you unfold you release that energy and you release so many emotions it's crazy how our body actually stores emotion that is that's so true and i'm just like oh my god just like thinking about it now but like you know i i lost a friend um about like a month and a half ago who lost her battle of cancer. And I was like, really, you know, trying to process all those emotions. And when I was doing yoga, because I've been doing it every day, that was when I just like went into a tailspin of just bawling, because it was like, you're alone with your own thoughts. And I'm sure there were forward folds going on there. And just like, your body being like, you need to get this out now. Like, this is the time where you need to get this out. Yeah. And you know what, it doesn't matter what sign you are, you're all, everyone has a survival instinct of storing emotion in our body. Our bodies are so intelligent and a suit, our fascial system just releases that when we're stretching, when we're moving in different ways than we normally do. Cause we all get stuck in habits of like walking the same way, sitting the same way. And as soon as you're moving in different ways and you're like embodying those actual energies of the universe, you have like this radical healing process so cool okay. yeah and actually i know you guys talk about chiron a lot so maybe we could talk about chiron healing so yeah. for example like i love to do healing through yoga and i have chiron in virgo which is all about the digestive system and actually like a little while ago i've started having digestive problems which i know is like my chiron coming back up i also have some like conjunctions going on that's bringing up those emotions in my body so I've been really tuning into doing like wind relieving pose which is where you like hold one leg into your stomach and you're massaging and and pushing your digestive system around so that you can you can really work those energies out that's really interesting so like based on where your chiron would be like I'm just thinking like both of our chirons are in cancer like Tara and I 
So those kind of cancer practices and more like holding things for longer and allowing like, you know, all the emotions to kind of be brought up and then come out. Yeah. Throughout this cancer season, you can definitely be tapping into that Chiron energy as well, because yeah, the sun's going to conjunct your, your Chiron and shine light on that healing that you need to do. Oh, okay. We're starting yoga, Tara. Yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm very open to it. I know they do it uh, right down the block from me is like the green, the town green, and they do yoga on the green, like all the time. And I'm always like, I should do that. I should, I should do that. And I don't. So <laughs> It's right there. It's right there. And I could just bring the mat and go down there and do it. But we're going to do it. Yeah. It's so intimidating to start though. Like when you go on Instagram, it's not accessible. You see people doing these crazy postures, which is really not what yoga is. If you come to my yoga class, I'm not going to put you in wild upside down postures. That's just not sustainable or accessible for. Mm -hmm. That's so, that's so true. It's, it's like Instagram or social media filtering of like people what, on their heads and like yeah. you know with their one leg in the air and the other leg this way and it's like that looks really cool but and like yeah. peaceful but who could actually do that <laughs> and I think it's because people sexualize yoga like sex sells it's that Scorpio energy coming out in all those photos that are, are getting people followers and making them famous when really that's not yoga at all it's so egotistical and it's not for me yoga is more about body movement and embodying and releasing and and just dropping into yourself on this like earthly plane I love that Mm -hmm. and I when I first like tried yoga because I like like with like the beach body videos I used to do it was like you know a rotation of different types of exercises and there would always be like a yoga one or like a yoga pilates type one and I would always be so frustrated with that one because I wanted to like it, but I was like, my body doesn't bend that way and blah, blah, blah. And then when I started like this time, like this year, January, 2021, I was like, Tiara, you have long ass legs and you might not be able to move your leg from the back <laughs> of the mat to the front of the mat without going on your knee first. And you know what? you're not going to beat yourself up about that. And so like from like now, like whenever it's like, whatever the yoga move is, I'm like, if I can't get there the way the yoga teacher can get there, maybe I can one day, or maybe she's got shorter legs than me. And it's okay that I can't do it the same way. And I just feel like there's so much grace that you learn to have with yourself with that. But also like, it's all about finding the teacher that speaks to you and is accessible to you and is able to give you those cueing to get you into the posture safely. Because Mm -hmm. yeah, not everyone can just take a huge step back into warrior two. That's, that's just doesn't happen for half the, half the population because also yoga was designed for the male body. Yeah. Long, long time ago. So it actually has to be adjusted hugely to the female body as well. I didn't know that. That's really interesting. That is really interesting. Especially since like, I feel like it's such a, like girls do yoga. You know, I mean, I'm sure guys do too, but you don't hear about it so much. Like guys aren't like, oh, I'm going to yoga class. I mean, fun fact, it was created so that men could sit in meditation longer. So they would do yoga to release sexual energies. So it was a very scorpion practice before release sexual energy so that they can then go sit in meditation for longer. And then we brought it into the Western world and have changed it into a fitness business world. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Well, what other, so shall we go through some of the signs or the body parts? What would you Could, like to share with us? Yeah. I want to hear which, um, which body parts go with which sign. Okay. We can do that. And then people can message me if they have more questions. But oh yeah, for sure. We'll have you share all your details at the end. Yeah. Hey, Tara, did you know that your name kind of sounds like the word tarot? Uh. (laughs) (laughs) And speaking of tarot, there's a really cool shop called Tarot in Time that is so much more than just a shop. You are right. Tarot in Time is a tarot and astrology service with a brick and mortar store located in Kent, Connecticut, for all your metaphysical, herbal, and tarot needs. Their herbal and holistic approach to tarot and astrology is extremely welcoming. Their website includes videos of each reader so you can find the right match for you. And they offer in person or distanced via Zoom tarot and astrology readings. Prices are very reasonable, starting at $20 for a 15 minute reading. 
I've had multiple readings from tarot and time, both in person and online. When I was in the US, I've been in their actual shop. And when I've been here in France, I've been able to coordinate it fine doing the readings online. Yeah, I had one in person, uh, one in person reading, and it actually changed my mind about tarot readings. I wasn't a huge fan of them before, but after my reading with Mimi, I kind of changed my mind about it and I like them now. Yeah, so you can do easy booking online at tarotintime.com. That's T A R O T I N T H Y M E.com. Yeah, so Aries rules the head, the teeth, the tongue, the arteries, and also rules like your vitality and your overall health. Uh, Taurus rules your neck, your vocal cords, your thyroid, and your sinuses. So it's really fun when I'm doing Taurus practice. Sorry, my Gemini's coming out. I have to talk about it. And doing like little different pranayamas where you're blocking and really uh, blowing your breath through like one nostril and out the other. So you're getting your sinuses moving. Gemini, uh, it rules the shoulders, arms, hands, lungs, all the duality. So like your eyes, your both of your lungs, both of your arms, uh, top upper part of your body there. Cancer rules your stomach breasts, womb, ovaries, uh, lymphatic system, very feminine things that it rules over there. Uh, Leo rules your heart and your circulation. Virgo rules all of your digestive organs. Uh, Libra, your kidneys, bladder, your skin. Uh, Scorpio it rules over the genital area, areas and the anus. <laughs> I hate saying that word. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's up, Scorpios? <laughs> Oh, my scorpion moon came out there. Wow. Um, Sagittarius rules your hips, your thighs, sacrum, and also just rules over your joints. Your, uh, no, sorry. I'm going into Capricorn there. Uh, hips, thighs, sacrum. Capricorn rules over your spine, your joints, your ligaments. So very Saturnian. It rules over uh, everything that gravity affects, all of those bones in your body. Uh, Aquarius rules over your calf, your ankles, your Achilles tendon, so the bottom part of your leg. And then Pisces rules over your feet, your toes, and then your pituitary gland, (laughs) gland, which releases your endorphins and like melatonin as well. Okay. So interesting to me that Pisces rules over your penile gland that releases melatonin. Because to me, when I think about Pisces, it's all about dreaming and being communicated with in your dreams. And it literally rolls over that hormone in your body. I also love that with Pisces being like the last sign of the Zodiac, how it's seen as like the culmination of all the signs, like all together, since it's the last one, whereas Aries, you know, we're starting off at the beginning, but then you see Pisces ends at the feet, but then also oh, a little bit up here because we kind of are wrapping it all. Yeah. Yeah. And if you think about it, your hormones risk through your whole body. They're not just hanging out right here. So yeah, it really does take over all of your body. Okay, cool. Yeah, so the last real thing that I would want to talk about is that, of course, I, I work with like the moon cycles as well. There's yeah. actual physical research that the moon affects the earth, it affects the tides, it affects certain animals, it affects the humans. We're 75% water, don't quote me on that exact number, but I'm pretty sure it's 75% water. So I love to work with like new moons and full moons, there's this word we use in yoga called pranayama, which is uh, life force breath. And when you think about the new moon, it's the second half of that word. So ayama, which is the inhalation breath, the exhalation of your breath. So the inhalation, when you pause, that's a full moon, when you're full of life energy. And when you exhale, that's the, the new moon, when you're feeling grounded, when you're listening to your emotions. When you're starting to release all of your energy, you're starting to calm down. I think it's beautiful to think about those breaths in the practice and then bring it into a Hatha yoga class, which Hatha means half means sun and Tha means moon. So it's actually masculine and feminine energies that are brought into the practice of yoga. So actually, this is not a new concept, yoga and astrology. It was it was connected when yoga was created, Hatha yoga, connecting those two energies. And I think those practices are so fun to do on new moons and full moons. And new moons, more about yin yoga, more about guided meditation, listening to yourself 
and new moons uh, and full moons, more about moon salutations, a little bit more dynamic energy because you're filled with that life force. Okay, because you're like like the breathing in, and when you're at the top, that's the that's the full moon. So almost like you're filling yourself up with all of the life and you're like bringing that energy in. And then for the new moon, you're releasing it all. So it's very. That calmness of full of energy, knowing that like good stuff is coming full of energy, releasing it. Oh, that's interesting, especially because we're at the tail end of the new moon and Gemini solar eclipse right now. So that's um, when we're mm-hmm. recording this at least. So yeah, I've been feeling all of those energies and it is nice to kind of needing to let a lot of that go. <laughs> There's just so much going on. Yeah, that was an information overload a couple weeks, days, hours. Um, and I actually didn't do any sort of body movement practice because it was too intense. Actually, the other day I was dancing in my kitchen with my daughter and I put my arms over my head and it's Gemini season. So I was like dancing with my arms over my head, which I don't normally do. And I started tearing up and I like had to put my arms down quickly. So I was like, whoa, that was too much Gemini energy. Getting really oh, there. yeah. With like the dancing in the arms and the, yeah. wow. And I never danced with my arms over my head. And I was like, whoa, that was too much. I got to step away from that. Too much <laughs> Wow. And that just goes to like prove exactly what you were saying about how we're able to release things that way and like use the energies that are going on around us. Like, you know, it is Gemini season and and how, like we talk about in our episodes where it's not Gemini season, we're not just talking to Gemini's when we do those episodes. It's like, what's everybody feeling this Gemini season? Because you're feeling all of that Gemini energy. So that's like a perfect example of you feeling that Gemini energy show up so differently in everyone yeah for Gemini rising I feel like maybe it no I'm not gonna say that that was my Leo gonna come out I was gonna say I think it's affecting me more than anyone but (laughs) I think the especially right now all of the mutable signs are really feeling affected because it's like it's the new moon in Gemini and it's Mercury retrograde so it's like the those you know Mercury rulers and just the all the mutable vibes going on right now yeah, and we're a Mercury ruled household over here, so. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's been interesting. <laughs> so, can I ask you? I'm just thinking. So, Tara is a triple Libra, and someone who's just about to get going with yoga, perhaps. So, what would be some of like the good moves, maybe, or you know, poses or advice for the a triple Libra? getting or what would you advise since I know you use like charts sometimes I'm gonna write down what you say because yeah so it's like Libra ruled by like your kidneys and your bladder and things like that the perfect class for you would be a twisting class so when you're doing like prayer twist you're twisting to the side and you're you're what's that word condensing like you're compressing and then when you unt you're filling it back up with like great energy so it's all about condensing breathing and then blood flows through it again healthier blood you're all about cleansing your body so all that twists and binds like connecting your arms behind your back everything twisting or even when you're in like like the eagle arms well eagle is actually more for scorpio because you are when your legs are pushing together you're restricting the blood flow to your genital organs and then when you unbind then the blood comes back in and you're refreshing your genitals but when, when you would be in like um, a high lunge, you could do like a twisting lunge where your opposite arm comes up in the air and your stomach is twisting open. I can send you photos of it. It's kind of hard to be explaining it, but because yeah, you contract, you restrict blood flow, you uncontract, new oxygenated blood goes into those organs. Uh, and so because of like, just to like bring it back to the like astrological part, that's because Libra is the ruler of like the kidney area. Yeah, it's all about the kid- It's all about the detoxifying organs. Interesting. So, do you think that there's a correlation between like, depending on your sign, are you more prone to certain health issues concerning that part of your body? Do you think that that's a thing, or is that a whole aspect of like? medical astrology where astrologers look at those things but I think it has a lot to do with aspects and stuff like that as well but I I don't know so much about it but I think yes for example like I have digestive issues I have Chiron in Virgo and I feel like 
a Libra also rules over the skin. So I'd be curious to know if when you were younger or if you were like stressed out, if you ever had skin problems, eczema, things like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, I burn really bad. <laughs> that's a thing. I think that's genetics though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Okay. So then, so then I'm going to take some of your Leo energy and pull it to me. And what would you recommend for a Sagittarius Capricorn Sagittarius? Yeah. <laughs> so honestly, I feel like what you're doing is so great. For example, uh, practicing every day, having that consistency is great. Also, I feel like Capricorn's moon in you would appreciate having a practice that's the same every single day so that you know where you're improving, where you need to work on. Uh, I specifically a practice more about like hip opening, like going into pigeon pose. Uh, even actually all of the warrior postures are all hip openers. So things like that. And then a the meditation, for sure, you need to sit in a meditation. Guided if your brain is wandering, but. Yeah. You know, it's like one of those things where I know this is good for me. And whenever I do it, I feel better. I'm like, why don't I keep doing it? I need to just keep doing it. <laughs> but the I've... hardest part is showing up. Yeah. So that's the hardest part of the practice, showing up, stepping on your mat. And I think until you realize that how beneficial it is, something like meditating, you're like, okay, I'm just going to sit down for a half hour. And it's like, no, this is actually really benefiting the rest of my day and the rest of my life but it it we have this tendency of being like this is a non-action that I'm doing and I have a busy day you know so it's it's really I think that that's part of my Capricorn moon like you know at least if I'm doing yoga I'm physically doing something but it's like the whenever I actually make myself meditate I feel and I use guided meditations I feel so much better and and I also it's interesting though because like you said with Sagittarius I know Sagittarius rules the hips and I had I think like you know, just like TMI, my hips are super flexible. And I feel like that's like, it hurt my hips to do all the pigeon poses. And so I've been avoiding them right now to try to get back into it slowly. Cause I was like, wow, I never felt like I had issues with my hips, but I know that Sagittarius rules hips. And that can be a tendency of having issues with it. And I was like, wow, it's not an issue of having tight hips. It's an issue of being like, you probably shouldn't have opened it that much. <laughs> If you're having issues like that when you're in pigeon pose, you can activate the posture by like pushing down the foot that's back, like pushing it down, activating all those muscles. So you're not just dropping into the pose. You're actually like holding yourself in the pose. Mm, yeah. Like all those muscles around your hips, push that back foot down so your whole leg wakes up. Everything can, you don't need to fall into the posture, which I think yeah. most people do in pigeon pose because you're like, whoa, great posture. Let's hang out. But yeah. No, contain in the posture and it will hopefully take any discomfort away yeah that's very good good advice i feel like after this everybody's going to be messaging you messaging us being like okay what about my top three what are, what are the recommendations for my top what's three? my prescription my yoga prescription yeah hey i'm obsessed with connecting with anyone and talking and especially about things i'm interested in so i'm i'm all for it but i, I just wanted to quickly go back to what you said about uh, sitting in meditation for 30 minutes and just remind people that it can be a lot more simple than that. It doesn't need to be that. It can be, okay, at the end of the day, right before you go to bed, instead of just putting your phone down and going to sleep, put your phone down and actively think, okay, for the next one minute, I'm going to sit and be aware of my body. I'm going to notice how my body feels on the blankets beneath me. I'm going to notice the parts of my body that are touching a surface underneath me. I'm going to notice the sensations I feel, not as tension in my body. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes of trying not to think. It can be so simple. It can be when you sit on the toilet, for goodness sake. It can be like, I'm not going to go on my phone when I use the toilet this time. It can be so simple. I real That's like very wise advice. <laughs> <laughs> like my favorite type of meditation is like putting on music and walking putting on music and cooking, just just doing things and being lost in sensations, lost in your body, lost in your intuition, just dropping in to right here, right now. That's all it is. I really like that too, because again, like where there's like that, you know, I, stigma isn't the right word. I can't think of the right word, but like with yoga and these poses and it's like this unrealistic expectation of what yoga is supposed to be. I feel like that, you know, 
I feel like we both of us come came into this right now with that kind of thinking of what meditation needs to be, but knowing that it doesn't have to be that. And that especially, you know, certain people, certain signs, well, everybody I'm sure could benefit from meditating, but like you were saying with Sagittarius energy, like I need to know the truth of things. And it's like, but if I'm never listening to it, how am I going to hear it? Unless you're tuned in. Yeah. I think a lot of people have uh, misconceptions about what the yoga posture is supposed to look like, but your body in the posture is exactly correct. No matter how it looks, you can be halfway into what it's supposed to be, but there's no supposed to be. It just is. You don't have to look around and see everyone else. You just feel it. If you feel good in the shape you're in, that's correct. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. But I think it's hard for some Virgo placement people because they want to be perfect in their posture. So for Virgo, sometimes I'm like, maybe you want to practice at home by yourself. So you're not looking at everyone around you. Yeah, I know. I've never done yoga. I've only ever, I've only ever done yoga at home. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And I remember like passing by, like in Paris, like passing by a secretary and seeing people doing yoga outside like years ago. And I was like, I could never like, who are these people? And now I'm like, oh my gosh, doing yoga outside at secretary. That would be beautiful. (laughs) So perspectives change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you would like to leave us with for, I don't know, this yoga and astrology connection or something that people can keep in mind while adding yoga to their life astrologically? I feel like I've said everything I need to say, but yeah, I just want people to know it's just an additive into your healing process. It's not, it doesn't need to control your life. It doesn't need to be anything more than it is. It's just moving and feeling and being there. Uh, And I feel like the, in a positive way, the world is moving towards a like self-help and, and, you know, like Mm -hmm. actually like, realizing oh hey these are some issues that i have that i need to deal with and yoga can be one way to do just like how astrology it's like i want to understand myself better and i have these tendencies because of my birth chart and it's like well i have these stresses in my life now i can use that to help you know actually pay attention to myself and and help release them so that's really cool baby age of aquarius (laughs) i love it (laughs) collective thinking yeah 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 Mm -hmm. so where can people find you and get in touch with you i have an instagram account at divine alignment with martha and that's probably the best way to contact me yeah and we'll uh we'll tag you when this episode comes out so you can share that and so that people can find you through us as well i don't want anyone to hesitate if i'm messaging me if they have any questions yeah yeah, no, and it was it was a really good move of um, when uh, our friend uh, Brooke got us in contact, and I was like, "Hey, just wanted to say hi," and you're like, "Okay, new friend, this is great." <laughs> yeah, I was so excited; I was all for it. <laughs> and we live so close to each other. Yeah, I know it's um, it's I live like just outside of Paris, and so to find somebody in the north of Paris, where it's like you know it's really not that far. It was amazing to be connected and we'll definitely, uh, we can, you know, do more things going forward in the future when we're on the same side of the ocean again. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for teaching us all of this. Yeah. Thank you so much. So cool. So interesting. Thank you for having me. This was such a pleasure. 